Okay, so this is going to be my teaching video on Punnett squares. So we've just taken the notes on probability and genetics, and we're going to be applying that to some genetics problems where we try to figure out the probability of certain traits being passed on to offspring. Okay, so I've already given you some examples of Punnett squares. We did a Punnett square of Mendel's first two crosses and we kind of looked at why he got the results that he got. And so we're now we're just going to do some basic Punnett square practice and these will gradually get a little bit more challenging. Okay, so all the problems on this page are going to be set up like this. So you kind of have a word problem. Sometimes the word problem gives you the genotype. Sometimes you have to figure it out. To do Punnett squares, you need to know that phenotype means physical appearance and genotype means the genetic combination of alleles, okay? So for example, if black fur is dominant to white fur, okay, then any rabbit that has at least one big B is going to have black fur. The big B indicates the black form of the trait, which is the dominant trait, whereas the little b is the white form of the trait, which is the recessive trait. So if we have, once we know the parent alleles, the way that you set them up, it doesn't matter if you put it on the top or the left side. All right, so this is parent one allele, they're big B, big B, and then parent two is big B, little b. And then what you do to fill out your Punnett squares, you always are going to have four possibilities for the offspring. Okay, and you're just going to basically take this and this, come down and it forms big B, big B. And that big B is also gonna come over here. This one down, that's big B, big B. This one like this, whenever you have a little B like that, it's just the way that you write it is you always write it um, after a big B. And then same thing over here, the little B comes down and the big B, so you have this. So now we're gonna look at all right, what are the possible genotype combinations of this cross? Well, we have two of these, okay? So big B, big B, okay? This means black fur, and the chance of this happening was two out of four, which is 50%. Then our other possibility was big B, little B. This also means black fur because you have the dominant allele. And for the dominant allele, if it is there, it will always show up in the offspring which is also 50%. So now we're gonna practice one on our own. Cabbage butterflies, white wings dominant to yellow, okay? If big W, little w is crossed with little little, what are the possible genotypes and phenotypes? So we have this set up. So let's first do our cross. Okay, did you get it right? What does this mean? Well, what are our genotypes? So we've got big W, little w, okay? And we've got little w, little w. So what does big W, little w mean? White wings dominant. What does little w, little w mean? Yellow. What are your chances? Two out of four? Two out of four. Try another one. In dogs, there is a hereditary type of deafness caused by a recessive gene. Two dogs who carry the gene for deaf deafness but have normal hearing mate. What are the possible genotypes? So this is an example where in the problem, they don't give you, oh, but it does here. <laughs> but in the problem, it doesn't outright give you the genotype. You kind of have to figure it out. But it says here that two dogs carry it but are normal. So that means that they have to be this genotype. So they have the normal gene and then they are carriers of the deafness gene. So if we're going to do this Punnett square, okay. Notice that this time we have three possible genotypes. We have big D, big D big D, little d, and little, little. So what does this mean? Is this normal or deafness? Okay, normal hearing or deafness? Normal hearing is um, dominant. So this is going to be normal. 
This is also going to be normal because it has at least one dominant allele, and this is going to mean deafness. What are the chances? So big D, big D, what's the chance? One out of four, 25. Big D, little d, two out of four. And then little, little, all of these should always add up to 100%. That's one way that you can check yourself. All right, so here we have guinea pigs. Short hair dominant over long. So you're doing a short haired guinea pig crossed with a long haired guinea pig. What are the genotypes and phenotypes? So complete, let's complete our cross. There's only one genotype. So it has one S, so go back. This is the short hair. And what's the percent that that will happen? 100. <clears throat> now you're gonna try this one on your own. All right, did you set up your Punnett square correctly? Also a tongue roller because it carries at least one dominant allele. Okay, here's another guinea pig problem. Uh, let's see. Rough coats are dominant over smooth. So we got big R, big R. Cross with the big R, little r. Okay, so we have two possible genotypes. This is going to happen. So this means um, rough coats are dominant over smooth. So this is rough. This is also rough. This is 20, 50%, 50%. Now, um, in class, we're going to be going over these and working these problems. And so you're going to do that, and then I am going to show you the key. So for the first two problems, this is how I set it up. This is what I'm getting for my genotypes and my probabilities. Brown and blonde, 50-50, pink wings. I use Ws, you could actually use any letter you wanted because it was wings. Homozygous recessive, that's your little little. Homozygous dominant, that's your big big. You're only gonna have one outcome, pink wings. All right, let's try three and four. Okay, so for number three, pretty straightforward with the long-tailed, short-tailed cats. It's going to be 100% big L, little L, which is 100% long-tailed. How many different phenotypes can result from a cross between a heterozygous male and a homozygous dominant female? Here's my heterozygous male. <clears throat> Here's my homozygous dominant. Notice that every single possible outcome in the offspring contain at least one dominant trait. So there's one phenotype, which means they're all gonna look the same. Okay, now we're going to do five. And doesn't matter what the trait is, homozygous dominant is going to be homozygous dominant 100%, which means all have the dominant phenotype. For this one, you gotta work backwards. So this is what I did. If this is big M, big M, then that means I have to have big M and big M here, right? If this is big M, little m, well, I'm getting my big M from up here, so I must be getting my little m from down here. Over here, I have big M, little m. Well, I know I'm getting my big M here, so I must be getting my little m here. So they are both big M, little m. Okay, Heter create a Punnett square in which all offspring are heterozygous. So you could work backwards as well. If they're all heterozygous, this is what they look like. So work backwards, okay? Big H, little h, so we're gonna have a big H and a little h here. Big H comes from there, then a little h, we must have one there. 
big H, little h, we get our little h here, so I must have a big H here. Big H, little h, that works out. Okay? Freckles are recessive, no freckles dominant. Mom is heterozygous. Dad is homozygous recessive. So if we do this, You have two possible genotypes at 50%. Does this mean how they look? Okay, so no freckles are dominant, so that means you're going to have no freckles 50% of the time, and then freckles 50%. Okay. 